آمنو قالو آمنا. And when they meet the people who believe, really believe, they say, we also believe. وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ Now this is the word, please note. When they are in privacy, with their devils, with their chiefs, well these are the chiefs, the, the Jews of Medina. The Munafiqeen were actually, they were in close liaison with the Jews of Medina. وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ They are the same, we are with you. Don't think, although we have openly declared ourselves to be Muslims, to be with the Muslims, to be with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this is all, we are making mockery of them. We are with you really. We, are with, we have not left your side. We are with you. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا عَكُمْ إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَحْزِئُونَ We are only mocking. We are these fools, you know, these moments. They are fools. And when you are making a laughing stock, for them. Allahu Now this is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mocks at them. Again the same divine habit or divine rule or the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whichever path you take, Allah makes it easy for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them increase in their wrongdoings, permits them going more and more in the direction of that evil and wrong path that they have taken and decided and chosen for themselves. They are the people who have purchased error, falsehood in exchange for guidance. Very beautiful words. Now guidance of the Quran came to them. Now they have two options. Either accept the guidance of the Quran or the opposite of it, that's the falsehood, that is batil, that is error, that is sin, that is disobedience to Allah. Actually now they have given away the guidance of Quran, guidance of Muhammad and taken for themselves, accepting for themselves, they have exchanged the guidance for zalala, for the error, the falsehood. And this trade of theirs, it has not benefited them at all. This is the, the sort of tafsirah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a commentary from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَبُوا الظَّلَالَةَ بِالْخُدَىٰ فَمَا رَبِحَتْ تِجَارَتَهُ وَمَا كَانُوا مُحْتَدِينَ And they are not going to reach the destiny. They cannot have now the guidance because they have gone very far on this path of nifaq and munafika. Masaluhum ka masalil nara. Now there are two similes here. And there are two opinions. One opinion is that the, both these similes are regarding this third category. The in-between people. Neither this side nor this side. La ilaha ulai wa la ilaha ulai. Muzabzabina bainazali. Neither the believers nor opposing, apparently or openly, in between. And the, both the, you know, parables or both this, these uh, similitudes, they are about these very people. Some are very deep in this quality of, of uh, hypocrisy and some are shallow. But the opinion which I hold and I agree with the people who think that way, that is that the first simile is for the kuffar. And the second simile is for the munafiqeen. For the kuffar we read these ayat, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا أَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ أَبْصَارِهِمْ بِشَاوَةٍ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ For them now there is a misal, a similitude. A similitude. مَسَلُهُمْ كَمَسَلِ الَّذِي اسْتَوْقَدَ نَارًا Their likenesses as the likeness of one who kindled a fire. Now this is actually a situation which you can imagine. It commonly happened to the Arab people when they used to travel in the desert. Now a caravan is traveling during the night. And they used to travel during the night mostly because the days were very hot. One couldn't take, you know, to travel in the, in the daytime. So during the night. 
and it did something happen that they lost the way. Now they are lost where we are in darkness. And in that darkness, somebody takes the courage, gathers some timber, and then you know, kindles the fire. Now they can see where they are, they were about, where are we? But at this moment, something happens to a group of people that their sight is gone. So they are again in the darkness. Before that fire, there was darkness outside, although their own sights were intact. But now the mahal, the environment, the surroundings are enlightened, but their sight is gone. So they are again in the darkness. This is the position of those. Actually, Muhammad Wasallam kindled the fire and light of Hidayah. But there were certain people who out of jealousy, out of their haughtiness, they didn't like to see the light of the day. So actually their, their sight was, was taken away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now they are groping in the darkness. Summun, bukmun, unyun, fahum la yarjaun. This is the likeness of the people of the second group. Their likeness is to the likeness of a one person who kindled a fire. And when it lighted all around him, Allah took away their sights. And now left them in the darknesses, they cannot see anything. They are deaf, they are dumb, they are blind, and they are not going to return. They cannot return. Don't hope, O Muhammad, or you, O Muslim, that any one of them will ever return to the path of Allah. Because now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away their sights. So I think that this simile is for that group and for the Munafiqeen of second simile. Or the similitude of a rainstorm. There is a rainstorm from the, from the sky wherein there is darkness and thunder and lightning. They are putting their fingers in their ears, saving themselves from death due to the stunning thunderclap. They think that this sound will take their hearing away and then maybe they die out of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already encompassed and encircled these kuffar. Where, 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 where can they go? They are within the grip of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They can, cannot go anywhere. They cannot run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yakadul barko yakhtafu absarahum. The lightning almost is near to snatch their sights. Whenever there is some light, they can see something. The lightning, lightning for a time, for a moment, they have seen the environment, they start going in the direction. Mashafi, they, they walk a few steps. And when there is darkness upon them, they stand. And had Allah de decided or decreed, He would have taken away from them their sight and hearing both. In the Allah ala kulli shayin qadeer, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful, He has all authority, He can do anything He likes. Now just have some thought about this simile. You know, whenever there is some revolutionary dawah, revolutionary movement, there are difficulties. You are called to do your duties in face of difficulties and risks. There are risks of life, risks of wealth. Now you, you may be, you, you may have to suffer and you may have to give up your careers. You may have to give up and wind up your businesses. 
Because that is that has been the requirement of every revolutionary struggle. Now these people who are in between, they are belonging to the category who want to do something but without any harm to themselves. They don't want to take any risk to their life, their wealth, their property and so on. So what happens? Whenever during the movement there, are, there comes a time when there is no immediate risk. There is no call to go to war, for example, during the Madhari period. Whenever there was a call to go to war for any battle, then they were, you know, in a very big trouble. How to save themselves? What, you know, how to apologize? how to get leave from that but whenever there is all the conditions are normal nothing very risky affair then they can you know walk with the muslims we are also muslims and they, they join the muslims in congregations they talk loudly about their islam and iman they take they make tall claims about their sincerity but when there is a difficult time time of trial and tribulation then you know they go down and their courage is gone. So that is the condition portrayed in this similitude. That whenever there is some light, they see something, they can go, they, they take a few steps, they go ahead. But then again when there is darkness, there is again difficulty, there is again risk for life or property or wealth, they again stand and they don't move. So this is the condition of those people about whom the description we have already seen وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَمْ وَمَا يَشْرُونَ They are all from among people who claim that they are Mormons. They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they believe in the life hereafter, in the day of judgment. But actually they don't believe. It's a superficial claim that they are making. It's only a verbal attestation that they are doing. Or they are making a total false claim, they are like the Jews. So this description fits both of them. And they were in close association with each other. Actually this munafiqat and you know munafiqeen, they were like an undergrowth. You know there are big trees, tall trees. Under those big trees there is the undergrowth which we call bushes. So these munafiqeen were like the undergrowth of the Jews. They were the established people, three established tribes. They were very influential. They were very wealthy. They were, you know, educated people. They had the book, they had the law, they had the, they had Torah, they had people, learned people within them. So actually this Munafiqeen, this third category was an undergrowth under, under that Jews. And this is the description of this character. And when we generalize it, Always with every revolutionary call and movement, you will find three types of people. People who accept the call at its face value. And then they die for it, they live for it. They take every risk for it. They are ready to sacrifice their all belongings, even their lives. People who are opposed to it, tooth and nail, openly. Because they are the people whose vested interests are threatened by the revolutionary party or the revolutionary dawa. They oppose it tooth and nail. And there is always a third group which likes that something good should happen. But they are not ready to sacrifice anything for that. They want to play safe, to keep safe. There is a very important and very beautiful similitude in Surah Al-Hajj also. I told you Surah Al-Hajj, you know, that is in between Makki and Madari Surahs. In Surah Al-Hajj there is an ayah, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ There are from among people who want to worship Allah, but keeping, them, keeping themselves on the sides. They don't want to plunge the main current. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفٍ فَإِنْ أَسَابَهُ خَيْرُ لِتْمَعَنَّا بِهِ If there is khair, if there is safety, if there is, you know, all the short is and everything is okay he is also satisfied he is also going along with the Mu'mineen and whenever there is some trial tribulation when there is a period of testing when there is a call for sacrifice for spending for the cause of Allah a call for going 
to the battlefield for the cause of Allah, in kalab ala wajhi, they fall down on their faces, fall down on the ground on their faces. Khasirat dunya wal akhirah. This is actually the real loss, loss of this world also, and real loss of the akhirah. ذالک هو الخسران المبین and this is the real loss this is the real danger to which a man is putting himself